Now, the reason I go off on all of that, and I, believe me, there's a lot more detail I could get into in that. The reason I go off on that is to come back all the way around and say, therefore, it is important that we not only protect the life of this world, that we not only make sure our civilization survives, but that we make sure we are able to expand our civilization beyond the Earth and carry the life of this world with us. The Earth's light foundation and institute are based on the concept that it is the destiny of the human species to carry our civilization and the life of Earth beyond the Earth. That is why we are here. It is, I won't go so far as to say this is a religious point of view, but it is certainly a, a spiritual point of view. It is certainly something that I personally hold as why I exist. This is my job as a human being, is to assure and enable that this occurs. And in the last few years, it has become very, very clear to me that somebody needs to stand up and say, this is why we in this field are here. I love all the other things we're doing. I want to make the money. I want to see the really cool stuff. I want to fly in a rocket. I want to do all of those things. I want to see the prestige of my nation enhanced. I want to see all these great things happen. But I exist as a human being to propagate humanity, expand civilization, and carry the seeds of life with me. And therefore, I become an elemental part of what I believe, as in, in my belief system, the universe is. To me, as an earthlighter, the universe only exists in the knowledge of its own existence. And only a sentient being existing within that universe can experience the universe for itself. Therefore, without sentient beings, and I mean us and maybe ET out there, doing the same thing, maybe having the same conversation somewhere. But without us, the universe doesn't know of itself and therefore it doesn't exist. It isn't simply at that point uh, a mass of energy or, or a, a, a grouping, an expanding grouping of energy and matter. So life and humanity and civilization and sentience versus entropy, death, and nothingness. Therefore, we stand for life. Therefore, we stand for civilization. Therefore, we stand for understanding, exploration, and habitation. It is not sufficient for an earth lighter to simply go out and look at the universe. We have to go inhabit it. We have to live there. We have to carry life with us. We, in an interesting way, we kind of outdo the environmentalists. I mean, I am, I'm so far beyond a tree hugger, it's, it's ridiculous, okay? I don't want to just save the trees of the earth. I want to expand them so there are trees on Mars, butterflies on the moon. I want to see life go where there is no life. In fact, the credo of Earthlight is to carry the seeds of life to worlds now dead, the light of life to worlds now dark, and the hands, ears, and imaginations of humanity to worlds untouched, unseen, and unexplored. That is why we exist, and by extension, that's why we believe humanity uh, exists. Now, that sounds, oh my God, you know, it's airy, oh, that's so, whoa. We have to bring that down to a very concrete reality. So the Earthlight movement, the Earthlight project, which includes the Earthlight Foundation and the Earthlight Institute, are designed to create a, uh, a level of credibility on the level of engineering and understanding of the tasks ahead of us, tied to um, the development of laws and policies and a, a socio-political culture that enables that, tied to a, a group of people who visualize the future and create that vision, or uh, in a, a sort of Orwellian uh, sense, agitprop, agitation and propaganda. Um, in other words, in the art world, the visualization side, I'll start with that, we're looking at a, a group of people who become sort of a school of art. You had uh, Impressionism was a school of art. There was a frontier school of art, et cetera, et cetera. We want to create a school of art of people who base their art on technical reality, what is technically possible and isn't driven by a government program. 
In other words, it, our vision of settlements on the moon and Mars aren't going to be festooned with NASA logos or ESA logos or something like that. Yeah, they'll be there. They're a part of it. But the art will reflect what we believe will become the reality of, of the expansion of the human race into space. Um, and those artists will be informed by people who are working in the technical side of things. On the technical side, there is a group of activities. Notionally speaking, let's use the term um, a portal. Let's say you go through a portal. Um, this will be on a website. And you'll come in and there'll be a, a, another three portals in front of you or three possible ways you can interact with Earth's light if you're interested in technical engineering stuff. Um, the portal itself is called the space development matrix. You'll go into the matrix and over here will be the Encyclopedia Galactica. Now, the Encyclopedia Galactica, which we do have the name, I was so happy to get it. Um, the Encyclopedia Galactica uh, will be a collection, an ever-growing wiki-based um, gathering of all the knowledge we have regarding space with a focus on space development. The idea is to put down um, in one place all of the activity and engineering and work that's going on in different areas of human space development so that we can figure out what needs to be done next. It's a checklist. It's, uh, it, it's, so you can go in there and go, okay, lunar ice drill bits. What's happening? You can look it up and look at everything that's been done. Now, there will be coding, color coding, uh, in the encyclopedia, the EG, whatever we want to call it. We haven't come up with a good acronym. We're in space. We have to. Eventually, we will. Uh, but you, EG1. Um, and you go into the Encyclopedia Galactica, and you say, okay, lunar ice drill bits. What are we looking at? Ah, okay. Nobody's done it. How do you know? Well, everything's color-coded based on what we call TRL levels. In the space field, we have what we call technical readiness levels. This is how NASA decides whether something's just a a study, whether it should be in the lab, or whether it's being, out, uh, being used in the field. So a TRL, six through nine, means it's out in the field. Three through six means it's being tested. Three th one through three means it's kind of being, you know, somebody's done a paper on it, okay? Um, one through three is red. Three through six is yellow. Six through nine is green. So you'll go on and you'll see lunarized drill bits, yellow. Ah, somebody's done a paper on it, but nobody's done it. I want to go work on that. Now you move into the second realm of activity in the space development matrix. In the second realm, you go, okay, I want to form a company, and we're going to develop a lunarized drill bit. So you put your business plan, your contact information, and the rough time frame that you think you're going to need, and you drop it in there. Now anybody who comes in there looking for lunarized drill bits will say, oh, it's yellow, and, you know, Spaceman Sam is working on this one and I want to contact him. All right, now, that could be a NASA team, it could be a, a SEDS group, it could be an ISU group, um, it could be a, a, a small company, it could be anything. And they've decided to work on that, but they're working on it as a singular team working in a single area. If you don't want to do that, you want to go play in a different realm, you go into the third area. This is what we call real wear. Now, realware development is what many people would call open source, crowdsource development. Um, we call it realware because we're looking at hardware and software. This could be a formulas for orbital mechanics. How do you deal with the gravitational anomalies of trying to uh, orbit the moon? Things like that. Somebody will work all that out. Um, or it could be hardware. We're looking at three or four projects right now. Um, one, interestingly, is uh, a variable G facility. Um, and uh, the idea of, of that is um, that it's not so uh, susceptible to State Department, Defense Department fears that we're going to use a variable G facility to bomb people from space. So hopefully we can avoid a little bit of uh, those kinds of scrutinies early on. Um, it also allows us to build a constituency of people around the world who want to see that done because they're actually working on it or their son Johnny is working on it or something like that. Um, and so we're looking at that as one possibility. Another might be a, uh, a core module for a small robotic lunar, mod, uh, lunar rover, okay, that you can plug and play. 
plug the bulldozer in, plug the drill in, plug the camera in, whatever, but you've got a core module. And from there you begin developing an industrial system. Because as soon as you finish the core module, then we're going to say, okay, now you have to show us how you put the parts together. Okay, now we have to actually create the parts from the available soil on the moon. By the way, all three of these then are linked in a matrix, and this is where the matrix part comes in, and it becomes a three-dimensional uh, interaction in that you're working on the lunar ice drill bit, but there's somebody working on a Mars ice drill bit, and there's somebody else working on an asteroid ice drill bit. So you need to be able to work with them. There's a lot of commonalities, there's differences, etc. Again, nobody's really done, um, done this where they bring the different destinations or realms of activity together. Earthlight Institute is agnostic as to where you go in space. We presume you've gotten there on your SpaceX or Sierra Nevada or your government rocket. We don't really care. We are above that discussion literally. We start at LEO. We start at the Van Allen belts with our discussions. Um, just an aside, you know, um, I've spent many, many years fighting the battles to help enable what we call commercial space. I've got scars, got the six guns, swords, whatever self-aggrandizing image you want to use. Uh, I've been fighting that fight. This is beyond there, this is above that. Laying that down, we're saying, okay, we all agree on the destination, we all agree on the motivation. The destination in a macro sense being space. You might want to go to Mars, you might want to go to the asteroids, you might want to go to the moon. And you over there, well, there's always that guy, we have to ignore him. Um, but we don't care where you're going to go. We don't care what you're going to do when you get there. We do care that if we all work together, we'll get there sooner. And if we have a shared vision and a shared public conviction and a shared um, technological base, we can do it faster. So we're all working together towards the same end. Space is a blank canvas. It is the biggest canvas ever created, and on it you can paint whatever your dreams are. We don't care. We're helping you with the brush and the paints. You do with them whatever you want when you get there.